Matthew chapter 19, following Jesus wrongly, we are going to look at Matthew chapter 19, and we are going to read um, verse 18, and uh, I actually want 21. So we can read from verse uh, 16, and then uh, we read up to 23. Matthew chapter 19, we are going to look at the rich young ruler, verse 16, up to 23. The word says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt thou shall do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What like I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. 14, uh, 24. And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. 25. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Amen. Let us go to Second Timothy two five. Second Timothy two five. Two five, second Timothy it says, And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Hallelujah. You have the new King James Version? There's so many here. 2.5, the word says, And also if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. John 6.26 6.26 Now you can, uh, you can start from verse... Uh, 23. 23, the word mm -hmm. says. Mm -hmm. However, other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Hallelujah. So we are talking about following Jesus wrongly. And the Bible has said in 2 Timothy 2.5, it is possible to start a race. Amen. And they run all through. And at the end of it, the person who said that has run will say you did not run according to what? To the rules that were set. Hallelujah. May that never be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. So you need to come back and understand. Before I began this race, did I really understand the rules? Did I really understand the people that are going to be crowned? There are many people who say that uh, everybody following Jesus will end up in heaven. It's not true. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are running the race, 
This race has rules. This race has conditions. It is only many people start when I used to watch athletics. I see many people will start running. They will run all of them. Some others will fall on the way because of dusty. Others will just get tired, sit down. But they will all be running. And at the end of it, they will crown number one, number two, number three. But in the Christian race, it doesn't matter the number that you arrive, only that if you ran according to the rules and the regulations. Hallelujah. So you must make sure that your conversion is sure. You must sit down and ask your growing and the people who are coming and they went in a boat to seek him telling you you can be very zealous for the Lord but you don't know why you came to Jesus. May that never be your portion in Jesus mighty name. Amen. And when they sought him Jesus told them you are not following me because you love me. You are not following me because of the word I teach you. You are following me because yesterday I gave you bread. And you ate and you became filled. And today maybe you came thinking I am going to do the same thing. And there was no bread. And if you study the Bible well, they all left Jesus. Hallelujah. So you need to come to a point where you ask yourself why you are following Christ. There are many people who come to Jesus on under many different reasons. And what brings you to Jesus may be not because you love the Lord. Some people come to the Lord because they had in a crusade. Kwa yesu ni tambarare, ukija kwa yesu utapata mume, ukija kwa yesu utapata muke, ukija kwa yesu utapata gari. Utapata... And that kind of conversion is a wrong conversion. Amen. You must follow Jesus for who he is. You must follow Jesus because you love Jesus. Because I will be showing you in the, uh, in the main service that there are things that Jesus promised us they will happen. And if they happen to you, he promised us there will be wind, there will be rain, there will be floods. If they happen to you and your confession is not sure, you cannot stand. Hallelujah. Kuna wa Christo, they can't stand any test. They cannot stand any temptation. They cannot. Because then when they came to Jesus, they were coming to a place that is very plain. They were coming for things. And after all the things that brought them to Jesus, probably they received them. And one wrong reason to follow Jesus is to follow Jesus because of miracles. It is a wrong reason. Lazarus received a miracle of resurrection and he died again. Is he alive today? He died again. Have you not also received a miracle of money and today you are broke? There must be a greater thing that is making you to follow Jesus more than the miracles. Hallelujah. So I implore you this morning that you make sure that your conversion is sure. For when your conversion is sure, you will stand until the end. Hallelujah. And there were many rich people in the Bible. And we never saw one that Jesus spoke like the way he spoke so keenly to the rich men. And the rich ruler taught Jesus... Every law that Moses gave us, I have kept it. In other terms, I am zealous for you. I don't steal. I don't commit adultery. I honor my mother and father. And I want to follow you. But this rich ruler wanted to follow Jesus at his own terms. And if you want to follow Jesus at your own terms, you will follow him wrongly. Amen. May that not be your portion this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. There is something that Lord saw in the heart of this man. Because God designs the motives of a man. You may be doing a lot or little for the Lord, but you must always know the Lord always wastes uh, motives. He wastes motives to see. Why do you do this thing? He wastes the motive of this uh, rich ruler. And I probably see him asking him, why do you want to follow me so seriously? Maybe the rich ruler thought, if maybe he followed Jesus, and the multitude saw him with Jesus, maybe his political power will increase. Or probably, he thought if he followed Jesus, maybe even the Pharisees would like him more, and they recommend him for another political term. And Jesus knew. This man was so much attached to money. He was so much attached to property. And he knew where to touch and the button that was to touch. And he told him, if you want to follow me, go and sell everything that you have. Give it to the poor. Then come and we do ministry. Jesus never told something like that to Abraham. Amen. He never said that to any other rich man in the Bible. He knew the weakness. He knew what, where the, the they say where the, the treasure, the treasure is, the art will be there. Some people you follow Jesus. Ask your neighbor why you got born again. 
Uh -huh. Because you are told you will have money. You will get money. You will never suffer again. That is what brought you to Christianity. Jesus says in the Christianity you must suffer. Hallelujah. So when the rich man heard that he is supposed to sell his house, he is supposed to sell his car, he is supposed to sell his plots, and then begin to follow Jesus as a poor man, he said no, and he turned back, telling you that his heart was attached to his money. Amen. So this man, even if he was allowed by Jesus to follow him, he will not follow him for many months. He may follow him for one year. When troubles come, he will begin to remember his palace life and he will go back. And the Jesus, this man walked out of the best deal for his life. Because there was no man that lost anything in the kingdom of God and that he went back poor. Hallelujah. I wish he just went and sold everything and came. Y yesternight during the day, the Lord reminded me that there is nothing that you do for the Lord that is not recorded. It's in First Chronicles 12. And I, 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 I knew, I have never known that, that even the men that God raised to uh, go to war with David, everybody came with their own sword. David did not have swords to give them. Everybody came with their own sword to accompany David in ministry. And it was recorded. Abishai came with sword. He could run. So and so did. Every small thing they did to further the ministry that God had given to David was recorded now. Including the priest that gave David food. Hallelujah. There is nothing that you give to the Lord and do to the Lord that goes unrecorded. So if this man had known that kind of a thing, he would have sold everything and followed Jesus. I am sure he would have become more richer. Amen. Because you know what Peter alikuwa now? I want to follow you. And I have left my family. I have left my wife and children. I have left my fishing business. What will be my, my reward? And the Jesus, when you follow him for eternal life, he will give you a hundredfold on earth in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So there must have been something that Jesus knew about this young man. And he was so much accustomed to it that he was not ready to leave it behind. So if you follow Jesus... At your own terms, that is point number one, you are following him wrongly. If you follow Jesus at your own terms, that Jesus should be your savior and he should not be your master. If you are following him in that manner, you are following him in the wrong way. And that kind of salvation will not take you anywhere. Because when shakeups come, you will remember again that you needed your terms. When Jesus comes in your life, he breaks every protocol. If, if you want to know that you follow Jesus uh, very clearly, you don't have a will. Because God has already trimmed your will. So that his will may be perfected in your life. Amen. You can't go wake up and go where you want to go. You go where the Lord has sent you. Amen. Because you are not just um, a born again Christian. You are under a master. And if the master calls, you are ready. Hallelujah. The other people that uh, follow, you want to follow Jesus. But you have very many other personal priorities. If you follow Jesus like that, you would have followed him in the wrong way. The book of Luke 9, verse 59. The book of Luke 9, verse 59. Nine fifty nine. Then he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Sixty one. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. 62. But Jesus said to him, no one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. When you have other many personal priorities, you cannot follow Jesus effectively. Now Jesus, uh, in this uh, uh, Luke um, 9, where we have read actually from verse 57, he was, looking, uh, he was, he was teaching them about discipleship. And the Jesus had told them, let me read verse 57. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. 
And the Jesus said to him, Foxes have oars, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has not, uh, hath not where to lay his head. And he said to another, Follow me. And he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. I honestly want to tell you, Jesus will never deny you the opportunity to go and bury your people. Amen. He just knew that this guy was not just ready for him. In other terms, he was telling him, I will follow you when I want, not today. I will do this for you, not today, but when conditions will be good for me. Jesus will never deny you opportunity to go and bid your family farewell. He knew he wanted to see, is this following? Because it is these people, Jesus never said, come, follow me. They said, Lord, I want to follow you. And he wanted to know, will it be a priority? Tell your neighbor, make Jesus a priority in your life. If Jesus is not even a priority in your time, is not a priority in your money, you don't have a master. Jesus must be a priority. And he was just taking their motives to see. These people that are telling me that they will follow me, they will follow me to the end. They are the ones that are coming with that desire to follow me. If I ask them that we go on a mission and that day is the day of their relatives' burial, will they come? Will they come? If Jesus wants you in the day they have burial at home, will you come? Will you come? Because I realize for you, burials are priorities. They, they are even priorities more than weddings. Forgive me. My first convert was a lawyer, Kadaji, so I know. It's a burial. And it's, it's a burial. And, and I realize they have, you, you have relatives that are not even relatives. You know where I come from? We have very clear lines of nuclear family. Hallelujah. Yeah, like if I tell you this is my brother, like if I tell you praise is my brother, I mean we have come from the same tummy, by the same mother and by the same father. But if Hallelujah tells you that is my brother, could be the third generation cousin. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the same applies to the people of Luo Nyanza. Now, if Jesus says, I want you to go and win source, and it is the day they are doing burial at home, will you go? Because Jesus must be in a, a priority in your life other than your culture. Hallelujah. There are other people that followed Jesus so that they may find fault with him. And these were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. We are talking about following Jesus wrongly. Number one, we said if we want to follow him in, in your own terms. Number two is when you have other many priorities. Number three, there are Pharisees. This one you can put it like this. When you follow him for religious reasons. You are following Jesus for religious reasons. And that is why you see. If you are not careful. Why you came to Jesus. You become a religious person. Yani kwa kwa wakovu tu. Ni kubadilisha ulitoka dini. Ukatoka Catholic. Ukakua Pentecostal. Ukatoka Islam. Ukakua Mkristo. Ukatoka Hindu. Ukakua Mkristo. It is just a change of name. It did not come with a change of personality. Some of us, it came with a change of dress. It has not come with a change of the heart. You are following Jesus for religious purposes. You know, when Jesus came preaching, he was preaching the gospel. And people love miracles, they love bread. So they began to follow him. And this was making the synagogues of the Pharisees to be empty. And therefore, the power base of Pharisees was already threatened by Jesus. So for them to say, we are following Jesus, it is not like they loved Jesus. They wanted, that's why they kept on questioning him about many laws. Should a man divorce his wife? What if this man married this one and the man died and the brother died? They kept on, what they wanted, they wanted to get a false statement or a fault in the life of Jesus so that they go back to the synagogues and they crucify him and the masses will go back for them. So that to them, so they were following Jesus for religious things. And I told you salvation has nothing to do with change of name has nothing to do with change of religion. It has everything to do with the regeneration of your soul. Hallelujah. So, um, as they followed Jesus as Pharisees, they wanted something that could nail him. Something that could uh, condemn him. Because, you know, Israel did not see Jesus as their savior. 
They did not see him as the coming Messiah. You know, Israel was already under the Roman rulership. Amen. Ndiyo maana unamuona Paulo alipokushikwa akupelekwa kwa jela ya wana wa Israeli, alipelekwa jela ya Warumi. Na anapojitetea katika sheria za Warumi, he says I am a Roman citizen because Israel was under the Roman government. It is the Roman soldiers that crucified Jesus. Hallelujah. But who handed over Jesus to the Roman soldiers? The Pharisees, the leaders of the church, the council of the church, and the nation of uh, Israel is the one that handed Jesus there. Now, when Jesus, if I, I can take you back in Luke 19, 28 to 40, don't even go and uh, read it, you will read it at home. There was what we call the triumph entry of Jesus. And you see how the Messiah was received. People removed their clothes and they were laying them on the road so that Jesus would walk on them. The, the issue there was not like they honored Jesus because they had already been so much uh, uh, oppressed. They were looking for a political Messiah. And the political Messiah had come. Unfortunately, Jesus did not come to form a local government. He had come to form a spiritual government. Hallelujah. And when they, they discovered this is not the, the man that we wanted to come and fight the Roman soldiers, to come and make Israel a nation for us. They began to hate him because in a few days after that, the same men that they laid clothes for, they began to say, crucify him. And Israelis today, they are still waiting and waiting very much for a Messiah to come and save them. They are under a religious bondage, but he will come. Amen. He will come during the second coming. And the second coming of Jesus Christ is not the rapture. When he does his second coming, he will come for the Jews. And who will preach to them so that they accept Jesus? Yes, God will bring back Elijah. I'm not talking about the one that you say is living. Elijah is not here. He will come back during the tribulation. If today you can't even preach to a Jew. Amen. God knows. He knows very well. He will come in those days. They will see their Moses in those days to preach to them about Jesus. So um, instead of looking for salvation, they were opposed to Jesus because his message was not supporting their status quo. It is the one that was shaking their, their, their power base. So they questioned him on many things. The book of Luke 11, 53 to 54, they questioned about uh, payment of tax. They wanted Jesus to say you should not pay tax so that they could arrest him. They questioned him on divorce. They questioned him on when to fast. Uh -huh. Luke 11, 53 to 54. It says, and as he said these things to them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to assail him vehemently and to cross-examine him about many things, lying in wait for him and seeking to catch him in something he might say that they might accuse him. You see the reason why they followed him. Laying wait for him and seeking to cut something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. What were the questions? You can go back maybe to 50. 50. Luke 11. <laughs> 11, 50. That the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah who perished between the altar and the temple. Yes, I say to you, it shall be required of this generation. Let me read verse 43 of the same chapter. I, I want to read the walls of uh, 43, 42 to 43. Those are the walls of the Pharisees. But woe to you Pharisees. You tithe the mints, the rule, and all manner of herbs. To pass over judgment and the love of God, this ought yet to not to have been done and not to leave the other undone. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the uppermost seats in the synagogue and the greetings in the markets. Woe to you, scribes and the Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are as grace which appear not, and let men walk over them that are not aware of them. Woe to you, let me read just to uh, verse 46. Woe to you also the lawyers, for you led men with burdens grievous to be born, and ye yourself touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. 
Woe to you, for you built sculptures of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and you built their sculptures. Therefore also said wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute. Hallelujah. So Jesus had preached um, for a long time. A message that was preaching was very preaching to the Pharisees, to the Sadducees and to the scribes. Scribes were teachers of the law. Pharisees were the religious people. What we call an entrance, where Jesus was uh, taken for court, is a, is a body, is a church body that comprised the Pharisees and the scribes. The work of a scribe was to wait for a Pharisee to say something, and then they will validate it using the law of Moses. So they were questioning Jesus about so, so many things. So that they were looking for fault. The Bible has said in verse 54 that they were looking for fault so that they may accuse him. So that they may take him to court. And that is, when you, when you look even today, there are people that follow Jesus, not because they want to follow Jesus. They are looking for the fault with the Bible. And after two, three years of following Jesus, they will write a book that contradicts the Bible. Hallelujah. Doesn't Muhammad have his book? Where did he receive the Old Testament from? Did he not receive it from the Jews? Did he not receive much from Christians? You, they follow, when they come, they are zealous for God. But they are looking, where will I find fault? And when they find fault, they will begin a religion like the Jehovah's Witness. They say, we have studied the Bible. They say, there is no hell. Because that is what they wanted. Hallelujah. And it is said that of the men that say, there is no hell. He had read the Bible. And he realized that sinners will go to hell and he was a sinner. And he did not want that point to contradict him. So he called his church elders. Those days, I don't know which year, we will one day learn what we call apologetics. This year, those many years. And he told them, God has revealed to me that there is no hell. Because he didn't want his conscience to prick him about sin. And it became a doctrine. And those people, they were, you find that they were following Jesus at their own terms and to look for fault. And when it becomes doctrine, they write their book. Mormons have their book. They, they, when you read it, it's contradictory. What though they don't want in the Bible, they take it out. And then they will say, we followed Jesus. We found that the Bible has errors in NIV. It has errors in uh, New King James Version. It has errors that there. All this is to corrupt your faith. May you follow Jesus for the right reasons in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Pharisees wanted people to change so that they could join them. But Jesus wanted people to follow him so that he could change the people. Hallelujah. So the rich ruler was a good, fine guy looking for the finishing touches on his life so that he could serve God the way he wanted to serve God. I want to adjure you this morning that you may make your conversion sure because that is what Apostle Paul tells us. That you may make your conversion sure. That you may know what brought you to Jesus. Because what brought you to Jesus is a miracle. You will run. Utaenda makanisa sixty. By the time we bury you, utakuwa the seventieth church. There will be sixty pastors that are former sitting there. Because you don't know what you are looking for. You are looking for a miracle. You don't know how to seek for the miracle worker. You are looking for something that may satisfy your ego. You are looking for somewhere where there are, there are no strict rules that you can follow Jesus just the way you want. When you go to a church that has some rules, you say, the rules are too much. So what are we going to do to this church so that there will be no rules? You start this a cult. It's a cult. It's no cult. It is the standard that you are unable to meet. Amen. And there are many people that met this standard even without grace. You are so much privileged that God desires this standard when there is grace. Amen. So follow Jesus for the right thing. When you follow him, you will know this is my master. He is the one that I am following. Even in days of massive backsliding, you will stand because you will know we were not saved as a crowd. It was an individual call in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So what are we saying, number one, that about following Jesus? We have talked about following him wrongly is when you follow him under your own terms. You are following him for bread. It is terms you want. Number two was when you follow him for uh, when you have so many other priorities that are a priority to you other than Jesus. And the third one was when you follow Jesus because you want to be religious. You want to identify. I, I don't know whether you come from villages like the one that I come from. 
We are people who go to church and those who don't go to church. So if a man that dies did not go to church, we don't identify with him and we cannot bury him. So people go to church when they are very sick, they are about to die. Because what they are looking for is not Jesus, it's a pastor that will come and bury them. That is following Jesus for the very wrong reasons. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Wale ulikuja juu ya mikate iliisha jana jana ilikuwa kama ulikula jana ukashiba leo sio siku ya mikate leo ni siku ya mafunzo magumu yale Yesu alisema atakaye kula mwili wangu ataishi na millions of people left him akamgeukia Peter akapata amebaki na watu wangapi Kumi na wawili they say this teaching is very hard even the rich man even the disciples of Jesus after the rich man left they said who can really make heaven who can really? But there are people that have gone ahead of us and they have made heaven. Amen. And they went to his kingdom. Amen. Now, if you have a foundation, you will not be among the multitudes. If you have a foundation, you will not be among the multitudes. If you have a foundation, you will not be among the multitudes. If you have a foundation, you will not be among the multitudes. If you have a foundation, If you know life like that, you will never leave Jesus. But if you came for bread, you receive bread in January. Ah, from February, Jesus say, let me give you a test for six months. You will not have a job. So you begin to look for the job. You walk up and down. Ah, you say this Christianity is a hard thing. Even Jesus does not care for his own. Ah, he does not do that kind of a thing. Let me try another thing. It means you are never surely converted. Go and check your conversion and make sure it is real. Amen. Strive according to the mastery. And you shall have your crown in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Ukimbie kabisa. Ukimbie himbio. Ukijua himbio has been set out for you. Na ikona rules. Ikona changa moto zake. It has all, every Christian. Jesus said for my sake you will be persecuted. Amen. Every Christian has a cross to carry. Before you say you will find this glory. You will have a cross to carry. Will you carry yours? Or you just came to Jesus? Nasema apana. And the word to you are to holiness. Lord, I am to holiness. When I do, I am not Jesus is a man. I am And on my deathbed, I do all restitution. Oh, now you think Jesus is your playboy? On my deathbed, I will do all my restitution. And I know I don't put on anything that is artificial. And I know I'll give my heart back to Jesus. Who told you you will die on your deathbed? You can die through an accident. You can die just instantly. Follow Jesus for the right reasons. Mukanda, follow Him. I want you to examine your life as we go in prayer. And I see why did you come to Jesus? Kuna watu pia wao wanaboeka huko nyumbani na unatafuta crowd, unatafuta uh, merry go rounds. Na kama inapatikana kanisani ni sawa. So you come to church to see friends. You don't come to church. When I used to worship in Jam, sometimes I go to church. And uh, from Mam Hotel I begin to see it's like uh, people are not many. I will get sense to know that bishop is not there. So I will stand at the door. Look like this. See the assistant pastor preaching. I know G Bishop is outside the country. I go to my hotel and eat chips. I will not attend church. I will not give offering. It tells you where my faith was. And many people, Mama, well, so you are a witness. Many people used to do like me. I was not. You find when Bishop is there, the church will be full. When she is not there, the church is quarter. So Wawas was unashuka kwa matatu. Kwa naishi isili section 3. So number 4 would always take the roundabout along Mang Hotel. So nashukia hapo. Nikiwa man hotel I'm able to check eh? There are no more people. Let me go see. I stand at the door. The door is at the back, you see. Uh, see it's reverend so and so preaching. Say no. Even the offering I carry will not be a blessing. And here upon man hotel and be in party chips kuku na soda. I eat and go home. And when they ask they say I was in church, but uh, you know, Bishop was not there, so we could not be blessed. That tells you why we used to go to church. We were looking for a blessing, looking for a miracle. If I were looking for Jesus, I'll go to church, right? And worship God very personally. Don't, don't have that character in Jesus' mighty name. And I want you to pray that I will run this race with a lot of endurance, that I will run it according to the rules in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let us just go before the Lord as he just looks for his key. I hate to carry my Bible for nothing and I refuse to carry the Bible for nothing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that I will carry my Bible and end up in hell. I refuse it in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that my conversion will be sure, that I will follow you for who you are. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I will follow you for who you are. In the powerful mighty name of Jesus, nitakufuata kwa sababu ninajua.